be putting them into production applications. So we are cohort one. We are going to be hashtag LLM01 in everything that we post online, everything that we'd love to see you guys posting to build your own brand. And we are the team at AI Makerspace. This is our first ever product, this course on LLM Ops. But more broadly, we look forward to building this community out with all of you. Today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to kick this thing off properly. We're going to talk about the course. We're going to talk about the different types of sessions that you can join each week. We're going to talk about some semi-important stuff that you should probably know about that we will spend time on that we've actually moved around a little bit from the original idea of the curriculum. And we're going to put it into slots that we think will be even more useful. That's going to allow us today to get into the number one thing that I've been hearing as I've been talking to many of you. And that is, how do I build a rag question answering thing with, I don't know, playing chain? Um, and so we're just going to do that. Today, we're going to figure it out and we're going to go over what is a rag, what is Langchain, how do I build with it? And we're going to we're going to keep up to date with, you know, what's happening in the world. We're going to find out if people think the Barbie movie was Kenuff. For those of you that have seen it, I think you'll enjoy this. If you haven't, you might want to check it out after tonight. Uh, my name is Greg and my job is to sort of steer this ship. I am here to really kind of introduce, to facilitate, to talk concepts. If you want to talk product, you want to talk strategy, I'm your guy. And we're going to kind of go right down the line here, and you're going to meet each member of our team at AI Makerspace. I'm going to hand it off next to Sarah, our head of marketing and community. Thanks, Greg. Hey, everyone. It's great to meet you all. I'm Sarah. I'm head of marketing and community at AI Makerspace. I am your course support. I'm your community manager. So if you have questions about anything, you need resources, helps getting into Discord, maybe a link isn't working, please shoot me a ping on Discord or get my email from the, from the notes after the session. Apart from that, I'm super excited to be with you all, and I'm really pumped to start learning, and I'll kick it over to Chris. Thanks. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris, and uh, I will be uh, handling a lot of the technical content in the course as it relates to LLMs. So if you have technical questions or questions about uh, some of the material we'll be covering that is not related to business strategy, uh, hit me up. Uh, I'll be there to uh, hopefully guide you through. Not hopefully, I will be there to guide you through and uh, and show you uh, what, what current best practices are. And we'll send it to Ali. Hey, everyone. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, so I do a lot of uh, the stable diffusion, latent diffusion stuff, and I'm also here to support on the LLM side as well. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. Greg? Killer. All right. So yeah, these two guys are the killer coders, Sarah's community, and hopefully I can answer any questions that lies outside those realms. Um, all right. So what we're going to do now that you met us is we're going to meet some of each other. And, you know, I... I cannot say enough amazing things about the folks in this cohort. This is the most talented group of people we have ever had the privilege of getting up in front of and trying to be useful to. Um, this is no joke, you know, from, from our own personal audiences, from the Maven audience, there are some unbelievable talents in this room and you just have no idea who you might be connected with in this first breakout room. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do what we're calling virtual hot seats. So groups of five, we're going to do 15 minutes. So that gives everybody three minutes to be on the hot seat. So that means when you get in the room, some brave soul is going to have to stand up and say, I'll go first. All right. And whoever does that, go ahead. And when you're done, popcorn and pick the next person. We're going to put kind of a lot of onus on you guys to do stuff and to engage because each and every one of you is ready to get after it. That's very much what we tested for in the application process. And we have no doubt that you're going to have a heck of a time getting after it with other people that are right in the same mindset. So jump in three minutes. We're going to send pings, reminders each three minutes for you to switch. If you don't 
have a question that you can come up with as you're going around the room to try to pepper the person who's on the hot seat with questions, then use the random question generator, like this one right here. Do you like to get up early or stay up late? Has this ever been challenging for you? There's different categories that you can pick and there's different questions that you can just use this thing to go ahead and ask if you're not feeling particularly creative right now. And we'll share the link with you in the Zoom chat now, as well as in Discord. We will talk about Discord in just a little bit. So with that, let's go ahead and meet some of each other. We're gonna open up breakout rooms, groups of five, 15 minutes. Somebody jump in, put their hand up to go first. When you get there, we'll see you back in 15. We are back in two and one. All right, everybody, welcome back. We hope you had a great time meeting some new folks. We are going to just keep it moving right along today because we are tight on time each time we meet in these sessions. And so we're going to, again, honor each and every minute. So what does a week in the course look like? Well, if you joined us yesterday, you know a little bit about what our Monday community sessions are. Those are going to be places where we come and we share insights, tactics, techniques, things that we're doing to build our own personal brands online, LinkedIn, Twitter, threads, TikTok. Anybody, anybody on that TikTok? Uh Whatever you use, this is where, you know, this is a thing that Ali and Chris and I and others have been doing for the last six months, the last year. I've tried many of these groups over the last few years. This one has stuck recently in 2023 when it comes to generative AI. So if you're looking to build your brand to get that next job or build that next startup, marketing and sales is very, very necessary. Come join us and you'll see what it's all about. Mondays also is where you can talk to Ali one-on-one -on -one in his office hours. Tuesday, of course, we have class. Wednesday, we're going to have what we're calling community build sessions. And we're going to talk a little bit about exactly what's going to be in these in just a minute. But these are going to be led by Sarah, our head of community. Although nod to Sarah, she's going on vacation for a couple of weeks, as she very well should uh, at this time of year, after we have this week complete. So the community build sessions will be every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Thursday, we'll have class. Thursday, I'll also have office hours at 11 a.m. Eastern. So for those of you over, you know, Pano or those of you over in India, you can probably squeeze in in the evening and jump in if you have any questions for me. Additionally, Juan uh, is our peer supporter. Juan Alano, I believe you may have met him if he was in your room. But Juan is basically an OG in the game. We are so grateful and happy to have Juan. He's a very, very experienced business builder, coder, entrepreneur, success. He's basically retired and he does his stuff for fun. He's just a wealth of resources and wisdom, lives in Miami. And I believe we, we have shared the information with Juan with all of you, it's a little notion sheet. Um, and uh, I, I think we're gonna go ahead and find that and drop it into the Discord and into the Zoom chat for you as well to learn a little bit more about Juan. These sessions are gonna be a little bit more informal. They're gonna be basically just hanging out with Juan. Sometimes, you know, class can feel formal, office hours can feel formal, even community sessions can feel formal. This is a place to just sort of hang out, kick it, and learn a little bit more in a more relaxed environment with Juan. So, Juan, I don't know if you have anything in store for this week that you want to promote here, but maybe just a quick introduction from you and your interest and why people should come join you on Friday. Thank you very much, Greg. Um, well, you gave me the idea. I was telling my group now that this uh, upcoming peer support session will be a hot seat. I loved it. So we will have some hot seat there. And also uh, you were mentioning about uh, my experience on entrepreneurship and whatnot. So I will be more than happy to share anything about it. I, as, as Greg was saying, I, I semi-retired now uh, after having sold my company, after working a lot of years. So I can, you know, probably share some uh, tips or, you know, experiences with anyone that goes there. So that's also another angle that we can take there. If you're planning to launch a company, uh, maybe we can uh, discuss about it and, and plan about it. So basically it. 
Awesome. Yeah. Well, really looking forward to those, Juan. Um, I believe the instructors are basically going to stay out of them. So, you know, get rid of the any formality that might be associated with that. If we can be of use, let us know. But hanging out with Juan is probably going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we definitely enjoy it every time we get a chance to. So check that out. And then, of course, the last thing of the week, Chris is the hardest worker on the team, the hardest working guy that you know. Friday night, what does he want to do? He wants to do office hours. Of course, he wants to spend it with you because he's going to be building all Friday night anyway. So get after it with Chris on Friday nights um, if you want to kick out into your weekend with a little LLM ops. So that's kind of the run through of the week. And the big thing for you to keep in mind is we're going to have assignments each week. We're going to do programming assignments and we're also going to do project assignments that are associated with your particular project. I heard a lot of feedback from people over the last three weeks or so, a lot of people doing one-on-ones after they enrolled. And what I heard come through loud and clear is that, you know, they really wanted to kind of see some things built before maybe deciding on a project. And so we're going to kind of start the project assignments formally in week two. We're going to really hurry up and get after it here in week one learn some of these really important tools that are out there on the market today, get a handle on them, imagine what we can build with them, and then sleep on it over the weekend. So that's kind of the idea. The assignments are going to be due by 11.59.59 Eastern on Mondays. I believe this is going to work, okay? Full transparency. This is the first time that we are using Maven as a learning management platform. So there may be some growing pains associated with this. Welcome to our tool stack, everyone. So if you're feeling like, oh, I'm not into this, I'm not into that. Now's the time to start hitting up the Zoom, hitting up people in the Discord. What we want you to do is we want you to be on-ramped within the next few minutes into Discord. Discord. I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like. Our Discord. We realized Maven has a, if you've taken a Maven class before, they, they have a messaging app, but you know it really left us wanting and left a lot of the students that we started talking to initially about it wanting. We were very much used to more of a Slack setup in previous courses that we'd built. And so we, we opted to go ahead and set up a Discord. And this Discord is going to look like this. We're going to have all of this LLM ops cohort stuff set up for you here. You're going to be able to DM everybody over here on the right. Looks like we have 12 and LLM01 so far. So we've got a number uh, still yet to join. We are going to make sure you have the link in Zoom now. You should also have received a Gmail invite to Discord just before the class started. So this is where you're going to see announcements. This is where we're going to drop links that we're also dropping in Zoom. So you always have access to them. This is also where you can come and drop in your intro. So this is kind of what we like to start off with. Tell us a little bit about where you're coming from, a little bit about you, maybe a fun fact, how to connect. And Sarah's collecting hype songs from everybody. Uh, so make sure that you share one with us that will probably come back and play a role in the community in the future. This is also generally just the water cooler. If you're working on stuff, thinking about stuff, whatever, come, you know, smash a DM in here, talk to, you know, call somebody out, ask Chris for help, ask Ali for help, whatever you need. This homework share is going to be relevant once you complete your homework. And you were sort of, and then off topic, um, Todd, we're gonna we're gonna expect Todd to continue posting an off topic because uh, Todd's the man. He's the one with the sunglasses right now. If you see, if you're on gallery view, he looks like the guy who's gonna crush off topic. And indeed, he is going to. We also want you guys to just put whatever you want in here. So, um, peer supporters is gonna be a place where we can talk to peer supporters. I don't think that's necessarily one that everyone has access to, but we're still getting this set up. If you have ideas for channels you'd really like, if you're feeling like you're restricted in any way, let us know. But this is the current setup. I'll pause for any questions on Discord right now. Oh. 
All right. Well, in that case, we're going to move on to the next tool, which is the primary way you're going to get your assignments. And this is the AI Makerspace GitHub. If you go to the AI Makerspace public GitHub, then you'll actually see only a couple of repos. You won't see all of the repos. But if you go and you actually accept that invite that we sent to either your GitHub username or the email that you provided, if you did anybody not provide a GitHub username, Chris, maybe just a couple of people. Yeah, we had a few. Uh, we had a few people not provide it. So if you could post it in the Discord or in the thread or in the uh, Zoom room, I'll get you set up ASAP. Yeah. So this is what you're going to want to have access to. Uh, you will be able to do this first thing that we're doing. It's a it's a public repo. We're going to focus on Langchain, but then and we're also going to be able to give you access to all these fine tuning resources. But we really need you to have access to the LLM Ops Cohort One repo so you can get access to those assignments. Those are the key things that we need to know about. Uh, third, I'm going to go ahead and talk about Maven. And the Maven interface is basically useful for one thing. And that is looking at assignments, understanding assignments, submitting assignments, getting feedback on assignments. That's really it. So when you go to the home page, you should have everything you need. And we'll sort of continue to populate this as we go. But you see week one, we're going to talk about RAG with Langchain. And you can go ahead and click on this assignment here, or you can click into this module here. We're still getting used to this in case you're not used to this. So this is going to be something that we're sort of all learning together. But essentially, we're going to set up assignments like this each week and each class. We're going to have a build component. It's going to be associated with GitHub because we're here to build and we're here to code. We're going to have a ship component. That means we want you to deploy this thing, make it usable for others. And for instance, you're going to be able to look at hugging face spaces that we have set up for you on our hugging face account. AI makerspace. We've been doing a lot of rebranding recently. So bear with us if uh, some of the links break from time to time. Hugging face. AI Feel makerspace. free to use the link in the chat as well. So this is the AI makerspace. Hugging face, you don't really need to do a whole lot with this, but we will be providing access to different types of spaces from demos that we do, whether it's in class or in community build sessions, or even in public facing events over the next month. So it's a good place to make sure that you're familiar with, but it's not essential the way that GitHub, Maven, and Discord are. And last but not least, we sent out a little bit on this. You don't need Google Colab Compute or anything like that today. So just make sure that you have a Google account and you can open Colab Notebooks. Um, although I don't even think you need that today. And then OpenAI is just make sure you can hit OpenAI. Make sure you've got your key to be able to hit GPT 3.5, GPT 4. Make sure that you can go ahead and tap into that API. It's a great way to start learning. We know many of you don't want to do closed source building, but it's the best way to get something off the ground quickly. Even if you don't want to expose your personal data to it, uh, we, we totally understand. And we are going to support all of you that have all sorts of problems with OpenAI, but it's a great teaching and learning tool. So with that, I'm going to jump back into the slides here. And does anybody have questions on tools before we move on? This is kind of important. And so we're spending a lot of our initial time on it. Yeah, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but in Discord, I'm I'm seeing like the LM, LM Ops say channel, but not the, all the others. Um, so are you seeing the LLM Ops cohort one? Is that what you're saying? Yes. And under that, I see the announcement group. Uh, I don't know. This, maybe this is something you take offline, but I, you know. Yeah. Like, maybe, uh, if you want to just refresh 
Discord uh, mm. and let me know what you see now. Let's see. Yeah. I see one that just got added. Okay, I see, okay, I see a couple others, and so maybe it's working. Yeah. Chris is the master Discord mod, so yeah, just keep keep it coming with the feedback. This is our first cohort, and some of the tools were not quite used to using as we were maybe in a different setup. So our learning management system is different and Discord is new for us versus Slack that we are used to using. So if you have any issues with those, definitely let us know and help us improve. Um, thank you for that piece of feedback there. Which All right, so we ask yeah, go ahead, John. Which channel should we ask for help in? I don't wanna just put. There is a thread channel called uh, cohort questions. So if you just want to make a okay. new topic and then post it in there, uh, I'd be happy to, to, to move through those. Yeah. We were trying to keep it simple earlier, to be honest with you guys and have just like an LMO one channel, but it quickly blossomed and bloomed into a lot more. So um, if you're not a super user of discord, um, definitely just hit us up. Chris most certainly is. And anybody you see posting in cohort questions, I would also put in that category. So Bowen, Todd, Juan, these people can all help you out, including Sarah, uh, Ali, and uh, I wouldn't actually ask me to help you out personally, but I'm kind of learning my way through it as well. Okay, so uh, a little bit of note on the curriculum. This is the curriculum that we initially had planned, and we kind of said that we're going to spend the first week on this stuff, essential concepts and tools for builders. I want to be very clear that we are not dispensing with this. We are reformatting the way we're going to cover it because what I heard over and over is people want to get into this much more quickly. I heard lots of people wanting to build with agents. I heard lots of people wanting to build QA systems, lots of people saying rag to me, and lots of people wanting to do more complex things. So that's what we're going to jump into first. We're going to have a little bit more time we're going to be covering agents as soon as this Thursday. We're actually going to kick Thursday off with agents. You're going to be amazed at how much you're going to get in today even. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cover these essentials through our community build sessions over the next couple of weeks. And what I am going to do is I promise to keep this updated as we go. So as we kind of go along here, I'll keep this particular schedule up to date. Um, if you have feedback, if we're making modifications and you have feedback, you feel like you didn't quite get enough of anything that was that was particularly on here, um, please let me know and we'll be sure to provide some additional resources. We don't want to drown you in resources, but we want to make sure that if you want to be underwater more in resources, that we provide that for you. Um, it's quickly, easily, it's very easy to become overwhelmed with a lot of this stuff. So we're going to kind of expand week two into more or less two weeks and keep week three and four the same. So a little bit more on that here. What we're going to do is we're going to cover fine tuning next week. We're going to cover instruct tuning the following week. Laura and Q Laura will be part of those discussions. And then we will also be covering evaluation in week four during the community session on Wednesday nights. We're gonna share a resources link with you right now that is also available publicly on our GitHub. This is a resources link that provides a lot of different notebooks for you, gives you a little bit more on fine tuning, a little bit more on some of the stuff that we've done, a lot of the content we've been putting out there. Maybe some of you have seen it already instruct tuning, you know, natural language to SQL, fine tuning the IO schema using Bloom and a LoRa approach. There's lots of things that we could provide you with. Again, we don't want to make it too overwhelming, but if you're interested in this stuff, tell us what interests you most and we'll continue to sharpen the tip of the spear to get you exactly what you need. All right, so that kind of bleeds into these community sessions. We've had a couple leading up to this particular cohort, and 
I think they've gone well. We've kind of been figuring it out together, but I think we're starting to get there. And last week was, was very positive. We have a special one this Wednesday night that's on AI video generation. That's going to be run by Ali. So a little bit of video in here, a little bit of latent diffusion models, if you're if you're down with that vibe instead of LLMs. And then we're going to focus in on these fine tuning, instruct tuning, and eval over the subsequent weeks. Ali, anything that you want to say about that upsell? Uh, sure. So uh, I think there will be $15 or so that is going to be uh, purchased necessary in order to go ahead and run this. $10 for collab, $5 for the actual script. Uh, the script that we're using is by uh, X, uh, S. Axella, uh, who uh, actually went ahead and wrote all this. Um, and you can see right there, I've generated a bunch of these videos with it. Um, these are all with Warp Fusion. So it's video to video transformation uh, using AI. So, and this is not Angelina Jolie, right? Like right. This is not Angelina point. Jolie. Yeah. Uh, I took a different singer and I changed her into Angelina Jolie and that's what we're so seeing you, right here. If you want, you can do stuff like this on Wednesday night if you if you throw down about 20 bucks. Yeah. Um, so Ali's doing cool stuff. Uh, he Again, he's our head of latent diffusion models. He's doing this stuff all the time. Chris is going to be focused on LLMs as you probably all already know. So, so yeah, that's that. And now we're going to get into it. So, uh, so then Langchain. Um, we have a lot of content. And what we don't wanna do is we wanna duplicate content that we've done elsewhere. So for those of you that feel a little bit behind on Langchain, I'm gonna show you some resources that I encourage you to dive deeper into. For those of you that feel like you're up to speed already, um, then just use this as a brief refresher. This is an advanced course and it's meant to feel a little bit painful and a little bit hard. That's why it was such a high friction process for all of you to get in. So I'm not gonna go through these slides, but this is an event that we did do and you have access to this. What I wanna show you real quickly is that in order to set up a document QA system, there's four primary components. There's models, there's prompts, there's chains, and then there's the indexes. So I'm just gonna go through this just very briefly Chains are the primary abstraction. The chain in Langchain is just about putting things together. And then when we talk about when we want to set up the document QA, the first thing we want to set up is the model. We've done content on this elsewhere. You are going to have to set up that chat style model. This is something we provided some resources to in emails over the past couple of days but you may need to dig into to come up to speed. This chat style model uses a list of chat messages as input and gets as output a single chat message. This is different than using a simple LLM. The difference is that it's using roles. So you see the three roles here we have are system, system role, user, user role and assistant. The assistant role is basically us acting like the AI. The user is just us being us. And the system is giving it some context about where it's coming from. So giving it some role, giving it some specific persona, giving it some place to stand rather than just on the LLM model. And so OpenAI and Langchain both use these terminologies. You're gonna to have to get used to them. They're similar, but they're a little bit different. And we're gonna kind of let you figure this out as we go. These give way to the prompt template that you're gonna to have to use. And we'll see this in action here shortly. And we're just essentially using the chat model context to create a prompt template. So you'll see it in code shortly. And once you have the chat model and the prompt template, you simply chain them together. And there's your LLM chain. There's the chain in Langchain, the first 
link of the chain. And that's kind of how we get started. From there, we need to then chain it to a vector store. A vector store is a specific type of index. And it's the index you need to get started knowing. As we get started with Langchain, it's okay to think of index and vector store as synonymous. But as we get into Llama index, you're going to want to expand your understanding of indexes to different types of indexes. For now, though, it's okay to think of an index as a vector store. So what is a vector store? It's simply a place where you store a bunch of vectors. That's it. And those vectors each represent chunks of words taken from documents. So you take the document, you split it into chunks, you turn those chunks into vectors through the process of embedding. This is all natural language 101. You store all of those in a vector store. The retriever, the R in RAG, let's say, is the thing that allows you to return a similar vector in the store to whatever it is that you're querying, whatever question it is that you're asking. And that allows us to then complete the question answering chain. We're not gonna take questions right now because we want to push again pretty hard in this class. And what we want to show you is that when you build a RAG system, a retrieval augmented generation system, which we are calling a retrieval augmented question answering system, which we'll talk about a little bit later, the question is, what does this thing actually look like? Well, it looks first like this, where you're taking documents, you're chunking them, you're sending them to, let's say, the OpenAI embedding model, and then you're storing them, the numbers, the vectors that represent the chunks, into a vector database. From there, you're essentially hooking this thing up to the brain, to the LLM. And when you hook it up to the LLM, all of a sudden, things become much more interesting. Admittedly, this looks more complex than it is. But when we load this thing up with some Shakespeare, we can ask questions like, who is King Lear? And you can follow the logic train through and you can understand the prompt template. And you can kind of connect this idea of the input in the form of a chat model message with the output in the form of a chat model message connected with this prompt template and this index or vector store. And this is what we're gonna have you work on right now. You're gonna build this yourself right now, and it's gonna be easier than you think. And we're gonna pair you up, two of you at a time, for 20 minutes. And when you come out, you can feel free to ask us whatever questions you want. Some of you will crush this very hard. If you do, we got some bonus challenges at the end for you that we'd love to hear how you did with. Some of you will struggle with this a little bit, and that's okay. We encourage you to work together in your pairs of two. Everyone in here is a very strong candidate and very motivated to learn this stuff. We're all coming from different backgrounds and different contexts. Some of us are extremely powerful, great coders. Some of us less so. Everyone in here can code or could code very well at one point in time. So we encourage you guys to pair up, learn as much as you can together. We're gonna to share this GitHub link with you. It walks you exactly through how to go into these steps. You're gonna need Git, you're gonna need the terminal, you're gonna need your OpenAI key, and it's all set. You don't have to write any code. 
You just have to run it. If you run it all the way down to the end, start writing some code, making it better. Chris will answer any questions you have when we come back. And then we're going to take it to the next level with something a little bit more complicated and something that's a proper programming assignment. So with that, we're going to go ahead and straight open them up for 20 minutes. And Juan, you're going to hang with us this time. And what we'll do is we will go around and make sure that you're okay. If you look like you're in the zone, we'll just pop in, pop out. If you need help, you can raise your hand while you're in the breakout room and you can ask for help. Otherwise, work with each other to get the help you need and have some fun, guys. We'll see you back in 20. Minutes goes fast sometimes. I hope that you all had a useful time together. Uh, we are going to have just a couple of minutes here. Does anybody have questions that they think would benefit the group? If you're struggling, you are not alone. This is supposed to be a little bit challenging, but Chris is available for any questions that anybody has. And we would appreciate if we start getting a number of questions, just put them in the chat and he'll rattle through them. And uh, if I could, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. Okay, all right, so-so. All right, killer, car free, like you're crushing it, nice. And Gia, what do you think? Thumbs middle, thumbs down, middle, okay. Uh, Chris, you wanna start hammering through some of these? Muted. Um, okay. Well, I think I I think I'm Chris is typing anything, them out. I'm not seeing anything really conceptual um or you know people are really struggling with there so if you're having sort of very tactical issues this is something that again we have a lot of very strong programmers in the cohort so if you want to go ahead and post your question in discord or just leave it in the zoom chat we've got people that can potentially really help out and help you get kind of up to speed more quickly but what we're going to do is we will press on and we will introduce how we're going to take this to the next level. First, I've been told by everybody that we have to take a break because we have a two-hour session and some people will get upset. So we're going to take five. If you want to ask Chris questions, you still can. We're going to hang around. We're going to take a, a quick five. We're going to start back at 8.23.30. 823.30. Keep it tight. The classes are going to go quick. Uh, so we're going to see how we can get some next level LLMing going here. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you another resource for you to dig into that we did in, a, in another event that we're happy to provide the link to. But this is just a little bit about Chainlit, the the interface for actually building these chat bots. And what I wanna show you about Chainlit is that it just has a couple of really cool things that you should know about. And it's got this, which is pretty awesome. It's called Chain of Thought Reasoning. And so if you're familiar with prompt engineering and Chain of Thought, prompting, this is something that is a really, really powerful way to sort of look in and optimize your prompts. I'm not sure what's happening there. And then it also gives you sort of a nice prompt playground to further optimize your prompt. So this is all built in to a UI that you put on top of an LLM called Chainlit. And so Chainlit is something we've got a lot of content on you're gonna end up learning this. 
But I just wanted to show this briefly to you that we've got, you know, this previous event we did completely focused on Chainlit. We've got repos, we've got resources. You're going to see Chainlit as Chris talks through this next application and this sort of lang chain, Chainlit, vector stores, indexes, all this stuff. We're going to kind of give you a bunch of stuff, have you work on a bunch of stuff and almost pattern match it together, almost like case studies uh, by building. That's what we're really trying to play with in this particular round of curriculum. And so what you're going to work on this week is you're going to work on combining OpenAI with Langchain, with Chainlit, with not ChromaDB, not Pinecone, not WeV8, but in this case, Facebook AI similarity source, similarity search. How do we say this? Fast? Face? I don't know. How do you guys want to say it? <laughs> we can say it however we want. This is the state of the art, baby. Um, so Facebook's vector store. If you ask Langchain, if you're looking for something that can just run inside your Node.js application in memory without other servers to stand up, then go for FES. Hmm. So we're going to see how this works. And this is your opportunity to ask questions. Please ask them in the chat because we are going through time very quickly. Chris is going to spend about 10 minutes, and then we'll give you a solid 20 minutes to get started on this assignment together in breakout room. So Chris, take it away, show them the completed version of the assignment that they will have to complete this week. All right, just to confirm you can see my screen with uh, Chainlet. Yes, perfect. Okay, so uh, basically what we're going to be uh, what we're going to be building today is this, which is a simple uh you know retrieval augmented q a system using langchain and chainlet uh, the chainlet part is basically done for you guys so you don't have to worry too much about that but the notebook itself you'll be required to write uh so i'll just show you some examples of things that you can ask uh you know this particular qa system so we're going to ask is ken funny in this movie uh we get the response Totally bro, according to Gen T25's review, they couldn't stop laughing. Ryan Gosling's portrayal of me, Ken. So yeah, I'd say Ken is pretty funny in this movie. Uh, as you can see, we've named the uh, the actual chain consulting the Kens. Uh, all just little things you can do with Chainlet uh, to show you guys kind of the, the UX power of Chainlet. We're also providing sources to some reviews so that we can verify you know, what users are saying and what they're being quoted as saying. We want to make sure to do that so that we don't, uh, we know the LLM will hallucinate. This is a way to help guard against that by giving access to what the actual, you know, reviews are saying. We can ask questions like, uh, did people like Will Fer Ferrell's character in this movie? And uh, we get this response where it's, uh, you know, maybe maybe they didn't love him so much. So, uh, you know, we can ask all kinds of questions. It's a QA system. And it's built fairly straightforwardly. Forwardly, we're going to show you how that's done right now. Uh, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to uh, build a retrieval augmented question answering system. There's some contention about the term RAG, uh, which is, I, you know, in terms of... Uh, technic technically correct, if we want to live in like super pedantic land, uh, a lot of the systems being called RAG are not really using the RAG technique from the paper, uh, but it is colloquially, you know, it means the same thing uh, as, you know, uh, retrieval augmented question answering. So the idea is we provide context, which should contain the answer to our question to the LLM so that it can answer the question accurately. Um, all you'll need to do to get started, the first section is just get some dependencies and put in your OpenAI API key. Uh, going to be a, a theme in, in some of these uh, tasks. And then we're going to grab some Barbie data. We're going to do that using Selenium and the Scrapey library from Python. Uh, we could pay $50,000 to IMDB for their reviews API, but I think this is probably going to be a little bit easier for us. 
Uh, we will have to be sure to get the Chromium uh, Chrome driver so that we can access Chrome inside of our Colab instance. Uh, once we do that, we can go ahead and just load a bunch of reviews uh, along with their some metadata about those reviews, which we're going to store in a Pandas data frame just so we can easily export it out uh, to a CSV file so we can use that to parse all the information we want. We could use a CSV parser uh, or a, a pandas in memory parser, but uh, we're going to go through the pattern of, you know, having some files and, and turning them into our index uh, just so we just so we have that uh, experience. So we are going to use the CSV loader. The CSV loader is, does what it says. It loads CSVs. Uh, we want to have our source column be the review URL. This is important because we will be returning sources with our uh, with our queries. And so having the review URL allows us to do that in a way that makes sense so that users can just go ahead and click on the reviews uh, without without you know worrying too much. Uh, you'll notice that there are 125 reviews. Uh, there are a thousand plus reviews on the website, but you don't want to scrape too much and get IMD ma IMDB mad. So we're just sticking to 125 reviews. Uh, once we have those reviews kind of loaded into documents, right? So the idea is that we're taking each of these CSV uh, rows and then we're turning them into documents, right? So there is this kind of idea. We I talked about this in the other notebook, but there's this idea of like document is a very ambiguous term, but what we're using it as here is like the NLP term, which is, uh, you know, text objects. So uh, our CSV loader converts our CSV into 125 text objects. And then we're going to use our recursive character text splitter in order to split any exceedingly long uh, text contexts into smaller pieces. And we want to do that because we want to only provide the most relevant information to our LLM. We don't want to provide a bunch of kind of extra information, uh, go into more detail about why that's beneficial in the other notebook. But of course, uh, in this one, it is the case that we're going to split our text, a very common pattern that you'll see across the board when you're using these kinds of tools. And it doesn't split it too much. We only get 181 total documents out of our split text, so uh, not so bad. Uh, pay attention to this particular piece. Because we are using uh, actual documents from our loader, uh, we do want to make sure that we're using transform documents as opposed to something like from texts. Next up, straightforwardly, we're going to create face uh, vector store. So this is a much better version than the version we built in the other notebook of a vector store, but it's doing the same thing at the end of the day, which is just storing tons of vectors, right? So um, this is the idea of a vector store, and this is what we're going to become familiar with throughout the course of this uh, program. And we are going to, right away, we're going to throw a little bit of optimization at you guys just to, uh, just so you can see some of the patterns we're going to be looking at later on, which is we're going to use a cache-backed embeddings uh, so instead of the standard embeddings model, which doesn't care what else it's uh, it's embedded, we're going to use this cache-backed embedding in order to, you know, have a, a cache of what we've already embedded. So if we get the same query multiple times, we're going to get, you know, a faster inference the second time because we won't have to embed that query. We already know kind of what's what's happening there. Uh, recursive splitter works better than sentence splitter. It can, it depends on the kind of document you're using. So if you're using documents that have kind of these like very familiar structured patterns, then, um, you know, this, the recursive splitter is actually quite good. Uh, if you're not, then sentence splitter can be very good, especially if you understand your data well, and you know that you're going to get a lot of context in sentences and maybe, uh, you know, you don't need so much outside of sentences. That's like one of those keys. You've got to know your data. Um, but we build our cache-backed embeddings, and then we build our or we build our face vector store, and now we can query it. So, you know, as talked about in the other notebook, this idea is that we've stored a bunch of vectors in this uh, vector store, and now we're going to embed our query with the same uh, model to get a vector. And we're going to see what document vectors are closest to our query vector. 
and return those. As you can see, we're returning four documents just as an example. And we get this idea of uh, the, this, the response. So this is what we're going to get in our response. Everything, including the review URL. Awesome. So very happy about that. And there you go. We're going to uh, just sh showcase very briefly that this cache thing works. Uh, so run it your collab and you'll see the, the results. It's great. Um, and then, of course, we are going to use return document, our source documents equal to true because LLMs love to hallucinate. And there is some evidence that, you know, these retrieval augmentation methods actually make those hallucinations better, uh, it, meaning that they are they are less egregious, let's say. Uh, we still want to just give our users the ultimate control and provide them sources so they can come to their own conclusions. Uh, we're going to set up our, our chain. This is a, per, a pattern that you'll become very familiar with if you stay in the LangChain ecosystem, which is we set up an LLM, we set up a retriever, and then we create a chain that uh, uses both of those in order to uh, give us exactly what we want, which is we want an LLM to parse results from our retrieved documents, and we want a retriever to be able to retrieve documents. And there we go. We're also using a callback. The main reason we're using the callback is just to introduce the idea of callbacks. We'll be using them more extensively as we move through the course. But for right now, it's just the idea that we have this thing that we can do that lets us interact with our chain while it's happening in between steps. And so we're using this standard out uh, callback handler, which is just going to print everything that it's thinking out to our standard out, which is just uh, the, the notebook output cell. Um, so that's all we have to do there. And then we can start using it like you'd expect. So how is Will Ferrell in this movie? Uh, we get to see all of the source documents as well as the result. Uh, and then we can ask, do reviewers consider this movie Kenuff? Which is if you're from uh, familiar with the movie, uh, you know, this is a, a, they do this all the time with the, using the Ken. So, um, and they, uh, they, they, you know, the, the answer is good, basically. So some people think, yes, it is Kenoff. Some people think it could be better. So, uh, but that is it. That's the idea. So you'll see this is a completed version of the notebook. The version that you guys are going to see in the actual um, repository that you're working out of is not going to be completed. So it's going to be up to you to uh, make some of these decisions and write some of this code uh, in order for it to... Uh, you know, work as intended. So uh, you don't have to write the parsing code or the scraping code. I thought that was probably a little a little cruel. So uh, that that will be that will be handled for you guys. Uh, but that is it. So all right, that's uh, that's Kenneth right there. Uh, Chris, it looks like we have one question from Ingia. Just curious if recursive splitter yes. works better than sentence splitter. Yeah, I answered that during the uh, okay. demo. Yeah. So yeah, great. Uh, okay, so we have about 15 minutes and we want to send you to breakout rooms in a little bit larger rooms and meet a couple other people. And maybe it's going to be most interesting to talk about your strategy for completing this assignment uh, and getting this thing to work. And if you know you guys are chatting and you come up with anything, you want to share it with the larger group, hey, we're getting together on day X at whatever time. You know, let the larger group know, let everybody know, um, because I'm sure this is going to be challenging for quite a lot of folks, and it's supposed to be very much designed to be. We will release the completed version of the notebook on Friday night EST after Chris's office hours. He's going to go ahead and release the answers in case you want to just wait till the weekend and look at the answers and just submit that. You will be able to. But with that, we're going to go ahead and keep the time moving along here and we've got 15 minute breakout rooms that we're going to open up keep the questions coming in discord raise your hand in the breakout room and we will do our best to help you out we know this is a lot um welcome to the party all right ali let's open them up oh all right welcome back welcome back welcome back we are at 8.55 p.m. Eastern time. I hope everybody enjoyed the overview, the discussion. Um, does anybody have any shout outs of, of things that they're planning to do to maybe 
get this thing completed. Any community vibes type type things they want to shout out real quick? Maybe one minute. Everybody is completely posted. Perfect. Yes. Okay. As designed. Okay. So what did we learn today? Rag is basically Raka. We can be all technocrat pedant about that. And we should be, and you should discuss it with us in office hours. Question answering. If you learn how to do this, you are absolutely dynamically dangerous in every company on the planet and you should be paid more. Okay. That's why you need to go get after this. Once you know the basics, you're going to be able to just crush any application. That's the fuel that you need to get down to business.